Hey guys, going to do some ladder grinding today with our Rakdos Prowess deck I've been working on. Um, I just wanted to say, first of all, if you're new to my videos, thank you so much for stopping by. And if you do end up liking my videos, uh, please consider subscribing and maybe sharing it with a friend of yours. And for all my returning viewers, thank you guys so much again for coming back. I really do appreciate you guys. I also want to give a big shout out here to my members. And thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. Um, if anyone would like to become a member for as little as $1.99 a month to help support my channel, here's exactly how you do that. If you would like to become a member and help support my channel, you can do so. Just click on the join button right next to where it says subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. Um, or if you would like to just support my channel just on a one-time basis, you can also click the super thanks button uh, here right on the... Uh, also right under the banner here for the video. So these are both great ways to support the channel. I really appreciate you guys and I couldn't do this without you. So thank you guys so much again for your consideration. All right, let's get into some games. Okay, so just wanted to uh, jump in here. Before I do, I also wanted to let you guys know um, I have uh, spoke with AceMTG and I am planning another uh, collab draft with him. So really excited for hopefully getting that out in the next week or so here. Um, I'm a huge fan of his channel, so if you haven't checked it out, I know he hasn't made videos in a while, but he's got just a great plethora of good videos. His, um, his channel's AceMTG, and uh, I'll have a link here in the description here as well. Um, also in the description, I'll have a link for this deck list, both on moxfield.com and untapped.gg, um, and then also a couple of other playlists of mine, so if you wanna check those out. So with Rakdos Prowess, I've been kind of going back and forth between Slesnia Rabbits, which has been a lot of fun. I tried sort of a Bant version, which just ended up having kind of too much, too many pain lands to really get going. I, I wanted to add in like counter spells and it just wasn't doing enough. And I just kind of kept coming back to the fact that like Mono Red slash Gruul slash Rakdos Prowess is so strong right now. Like, it can reliably kill you on turn three. <laughs> I mean, it's just... Red hasn't been this good in a long time. Um, and so I kind of tried to sort of refine a list, sort of do a little bit of um, kind of cutting here and there. I looked at the Gruul list, and I think that they're kind of... I mean, they're gaining protection from, like, Snakeskin Veil vale and or... Uh, there's another card instant. I can't remember the name of it. Um, but I don't think it's worth going Gruul. And I think that just a straight Rakdos build, just splashing for a Kallus Cell Sword is the way to go. Um, it demands kind of your play style to be much more reactive where you're, um, you're not like throwing in your pump spells into open mana if you can avoid it. And basically you end up against some of the control decks playing like this game of chicken where you get like, ideally around like two threats and just keep pushing in damage. And if it takes you like six or seven turns to close out the game, that's fine. You basically just don't want to get caught um, going for like a pump spell into getting blown out by removal. And eventually they will have to tap out for something big. Um, and ideally you don't want to be pushing more than like two bodies on the table. Um, just because you want to hold something in reserve so that you can use hopefully something either with haste or maybe if you've got like a felonious rage you can give it haste for like the last couple points to get it done because this deck is so explosive i think just making sure you connect with your pump is super important um there's a lot of lists that are kind of running sort of a mix of both uh direct damage and then also pump and i, I think that that's kind of a weaker build partially because um, Emberheart Challenger is so good. Like this is so much value. Um, Manifold Mouse is just another fantastic creature in this deck. Just being able to give double strike reliably to a number of different threats. Everything is kind of pushing you more towards going straight pump, especially since we have Heartfire Hero and Cacophony Scamp, which both um, really reward you for going straight pump that I don't think it's worth even making room for 
um, Lightning Strike or Shock. I just think that they're better served by filling out those slots with uh, extra pump. And so kind of the uh, the breakdown that I've gone with, um, I'm running 19 lands, which feels pretty good. Um, really don't like flooding, that's pretty much how you lose. And so keeping a low land count is great, especially since our average mana cost here is only 1.4. So you don't have any three drops in the entire deck. Um, and a number of your two drops are also essentially one drops. Um, where you have like Demonic Ruckus and then Callous Sellsword are essentially one drops most of the time. So really you only have functionally nine two drops. Everything else is a one drop. So for the mana breakdown, I've kind of settled on 10 mountains, two rock face village, which can really help by pumping up and giving haste to uh, mice specifically. So your Emberheart Challengers already have haste, but like your Manifold Mouse, it can give this haste, it can give haste to your Heartfire Hero. And then the targeting is also really important just because it both um, pumps up and affects your Emberheart Challenger and then also your Heartfire Hero. So a nice way to, to kind of grow the Heartfire Hero. Um, I tried running more copies than two, but I feel like two is probably where you wanna stay just because there's so much pump that does demand mana that can tap for, for red sources for spells. And so, that's kind of limiting us to two copies here. Um, four copies of Black Cleave Cliffs, which is kind of just sort of free gimme, and then three copies of Sulphurous Springs because the, the mirror match is a real thing and like Painland can just make you lose the game since those games can be really, really close. So this gives us seven sources that can help us hard cast Callous Sellsword, which does happen sometimes. You Sometimes you have to go that direction. Um, it's not ideal, but I mean, there are games you just have to do it. So that's the land count for our two drops. I definitely toyed a lot with this, um, and I kind of settled on three copies of Callous Sellsword. So this is kind of your, you know, ultimate finisher. Um, I found before when I was running a full playset that it was just kind of a little bit too many. Like there were times where I'd have like multiple copies and I couldn't make full use of them. Um, so usually you want to see about one a game. And with three copies, this feels right. Same thing with Demonic Ruckus. This is a really nice one drop that can kind of get you going. I wanted to have 14 one drops, so that's why you're seeing a breakdown of uh, four copies of Swift Spear, four Heartfire Heroes, three Cacophony Scamps, and then three Demonic Ruckuses. This gives us 14 one drops that we can reliably cast on the first turn. So again, with Demonic Ruckus, like multiple copies was feeling a little clunky because you ideally don't want to cast this for, for two mana if you can avoid it. Um, there's also a number of situations where it's just like really hard to get this on a, to a creature since it is sorcery speed. Um, then for the creatures, we've got four copies of Emberheart Challenger. This is such a great value card. The fact that whenever you target it, um, you're able to exile the top card of your library and then play that this turn, so that's that's really big game. It does have haste and prowess, so it's fantastic right there. So they get full playset. Um, for a while I was running a full playset of Manifold Mouse, another fantastic card, but I feel like it's an effect that you can really, um, you wanna see about one a game. I mean, more can be certainly great. It's just that there's so many different things competing for those slots and having like a good uh, mana curve led me to kind of shaving down to three copies. So we're going with it for now. Um, it's been it's been good though. So this has definitely been nice. Like, yeah. So this is our, sort of where we're at with Manifold Mouse. Incredibly powerful effect. Um, just helps you close out games really well. And then two copies of Slickshot show off. This gives you kind of some game for evasion. You can also, you know, hold up um, a bunch of pump to like deliver it in one turn. This was like the premier card for Mono Red in like before pre-rotation. Um, and it's still fantastic. And I like I wish we could have a full play set, but there just isn't enough slots in the two drop to sort of make this happen. So I'm kind of settling on two copies and just sort of seeing where it goes. So far I like this breakdown, but this could change. For your one drops, we have four copies of Swift Spear, which is an auto include. This card is just pretty much always gonna be in red decks, it's so good. Um, four copies of Heartfire Hero, this is like your best one drop, I think, just because 
it does permanently grow when you target it. And then it's also like the big payoff because when it dies, it deals damage to the opponent. Um, if you can chain this with Kalos Cell Sword, it'll do the Kalos Cell Sword damage and then it'll do its own damage again. So you can do like triple damage. It's if you get the attack in first, so it's really good. Um, Cacophony Scamp is sort of like a poor man's Heartfire Hero. It's still great because it does the same thing. Um, and it can sacrifice itself, so it doesn't need help to sacrifice. That is good. But the fact that it's not growing just by being targeted, I think that's kind of what's leading me to run only three copies right now. I wanted to make sure I had a nice balance between like Pump and Guys. And so for Pump, we have uh, four copies of Might of the Meek because it cycles, which is super important. Also, you're going to have a mouse fairly often, and so you will usually get the plus one, plus zero, which is really nice, and trample. Uh, you want to have a lot of trample enablers, so we have three copies here with Demonic Ruckus that gives trample, four copies of Might of the Meek, four copies of Monstrous Rage, which is an auto-include. This card is completely busted. Um, I would never play less than four in this style of deck. And then I'm doing a one-of here of Dreadmaw's Ire, because it's another card that gives trample. Um, it also can provide at least two, two pump. And then the fact that you can destroy an artifact is sometimes relevant, especially against like Boros token control. Like if they have like, um, oh, a carrot cake out or something like that, you can get that. Or if they have like the, the forage out, you can get that. So this is like subject to change, but it's kind of sort of like the extra slot. So I'm adding it in. And then four copies of Felonious Rage. Giving haste is super important, especially since half of the creatures in this deck do not have haste. So like Cacophony Scamp, Heartfire Hero, um, Manifold Mouse, all need help getting in there. And then Callous Cell Sword if you have to hard cast it. So Felonious Rage, I definitely like having it a four of. Um, and then two copies of Mirren Bane Slitter. So this one is a nice way to have like a renewable source of damage. If it stays on the creature, you can also re-equip, which is really uh, nice, gets a way of targeting both your Heartfire Hero and also your Ember Heart Challenger, so it can like re-trigger these, which is great. Um, two copies feels about right, just because it doesn't give Trample and it doesn't give Haste, so that's why we settled with two. Um, anyways, this is the deck, and Let's go ahead and do a couple games. This is kind of what I've been use, using to be climbing with. It's just kind of proving to be like the most efficient way to get there. And I haven't had a chance to do um, to do videos here for a little bit, but very much excited with uh, kind of getting back into it. I do also want to start doing um, a couple like standard event videos where we'll just take like an archetype and then just run it through a standard event just to see how it does. You know, obviously I won't be a perfect pilot for it, but it'll give you guys an example of like how this deck sort of plays out. And then like at the end, I'll talk about like what I would change if I were to make a change. And I did kind of some of those in the past. So if you're a returning viewer, you'll be kind of more familiar with that sort of setup. And then hoping to do, again, a couple more collab drafts with Ace. Super excited. I don't know anything about this drafting format, so it's great to have him come in. Um, all right, here we go. Opening hand looks great. I think that, like, even though we've got 19 land, you do want to try to have two in your opener, if at all possible. There are probably corner case scenarios where you would keep a one-lander. I try not to though, because it just like, if you get stuck on one, it's really hard. Um, you kind of want that two mana. You don't want much more than two mana, but two mana is great. And 19 land is kind of a good way to sort of fairly reliably get there to two land. Okay, since we don't have a manifold mouse, we could go with like the ruckus into show off play. Um, Heartfire Hero is also great. It's just sort of great, depending like against an unknown opponent. I think I'm going to lead out with that, because if we can... Hmm. Actually, I changed my mind. I think I'm going to go with the Ruckus, just since we can discount the mana. It's great on, like, on turn one. It's really nice. And since we've got the show off to go with it, that feels pretty good. Okay, so we're up against Gruel Pump. So we're just like, we're just racing here. 
Um, we don't have haste, so we could just set up here for another turn and just go like hero plus scamp. Is that better than just getting show off going? I think it is, because I think we want to start like trying to get this stuff going. So, especially since we know that they don't have any board wipes, just getting everything down feels pretty good. We could also ruckus the hero, but I kind of want to do that next turn when we can trigger slick shot show off. We could go for the trade here, actually. This is not a bad. Like, if he doesn't have, like, extra, like, creatures here, this could be pretty good for us. Um, I think I'm actually just going to go for the trade since we've got the show off. That, like, slows him down considerably. And now we can go like Ruckus into Monstrous Rage here. And I think we wanna go for the Rage cause it is gonna give like the permanent uh, monster roll token. And again, we're not expecting a lot of removal here. So I think this is a good time to go for it. And now depending on like what we draw into, we can potentially just like sell sword them out this turn. Yeah, and they're, they're super backed up here with, like, trying to go for a questing druid. They've got to play catch up. Yeah, and they're just going to pack it in. Nice. Yeah, so that ended up working out pretty well. Just going for that. Like, if they had, like, a handful of pump, getting rid of their, like, their one pump target feels pretty good. Especially since we had, like, the show slick slot the slick shot show off to go in sitting in our hand all right opening hand looks great we got our two land got the callous cell sword and then a bunch of pump this is kind of ideal because i mean we have the ability to like hard cast cell sword if we need to We'll lead out here with the Black Cleave Cliffs. And let's get Heartfire Hero going, especially since we know they don't have any removal right now. Okay, they could have removal here, it's possible. Um, I think since we've got Rages, like we can go Scamp plus Rage plus Rage, which feels pretty good. And then we've got like a couple different threats here in case they have like removal for our hero. And then if they blow out the scamp here, yeah, they had the lightning strike. We do lose our Flonius Rage, but then we can kind of go all in on our Heartfire hero. Okay, so yeah, we can make this let's get two two and x three. So they could trade here, which is kind of annoying. Um, I guess we can like replace with Flonius Rage. I think just sitting around doesn't really help us. I think we have to push. Okay. And now we can rage plus cell sword, which feels really good.
and that should do it. Nice. I hope you guys have been having fun with this set. I'm curious to hear if you have been kind of favoring more of like limited or if you guys have been spending more time sort of doing more standard content, would love to know. Okay, here's a one lander. I mean, this is a good one lander in terms of like, since we've got Heartfire Hero, we have the Cell Sword, we have like Rage plus Rage plus Ire. We're on the draw. And if we get like another land, we get like hero into Manifold Mouse, which is really good. I think this is one I'm gonna keep. I don't know if it's right, but like this is the makings of a fantastic one lander. And we've got Might of the Meek here. So if we can potentially um, use that to cycle, it could be really good. And now we're just racing. Unfortunately, didn't get there. So here, I think we definitely want to go Might of the Meek, hope we hit a land and keep keep rolling. And we got there, which is fantastic. And now, I think we go Rage. Um, could also set up another Heartfire here. Like, if they have removal, it might be wise to get a second, like, creature down. We've already targeted once this turn, so we're not getting like an extra push there. Now, since we have Felonious Rage, we can always like get this thing going um, with haste, so that is a consideration. So maybe it's better just to go Rage here. Yeah, I'm not sure. I think I'm gonna start. Hmm. I think I'm gonna start the other Heartfire Hero, just to have like another another threat down in case they do have the removal and so they don't like catch us off guard. Okay, them holding up two red is pretty suspicious. It makes me think they're holding like lightning strike. They could easily like kill us next turn also. I guess last turn if we'd gone for rage, they'd be at a lower life total and he could potentially, if we'd like drawn a land, go for like the pump pump into cell sword. So maybe it would have been better instead of starting another Heartfire hero for that reason. Now, if we go just rage, this is three, six, six, hit them. That actually should be enough. If they don't have removal, I think that's the plan. So maybe we just push, see what they do. Because I don't think we can like survive another attack, right? So like they've got to like not have it here, I think. And then we can have like rage back up. So if they go for like the lightning strike, we've got Dreadmaw's Ire to make it a 4-4. Four, four. Yeah, and that should get us there. Unfortunately, we don't have the mana to go for Cell Sword, which is unfortunate. But then like, hopefully we can survive one more turn if they're out of gas, which is Pretty unlikely, they, they probably just have us here. Like, especially if they have um, Cell Sword. There's a chance we survive, though. Yeah, like having another land last turn would have been huge. 
Because then we could have done Sellsword. So I think in hindsight, like, not playing the second hero would, would have probably been correct here. It may not end up mattering, but I think that that, that would have been the best potential play. Now we can just push uh, Rage into Sellsword, and that should do it. Yeah, and we're not going to fall for the bait here. We're just going to um, rage our... Uh, I guess it doesn't really matter here. We can just do either one. Because if they have like another lightning strike, then they could just get our Heartfire Hero in response. Yeah, and that should do it. So basically going back to the beginning of that game, um, maybe it's better not to play the second Heartfire Hero, but it does help us play around if they have like early removal and we don't have like a way of getting like a haste creature out, especially since we were low on lands. So I could see it kind of going either way, but it did potentially open us up to like a turn three if they had like all the pump just to get there. Luckily they didn't have it, but we easily, we could have lost that game. Um, yeah, so thanks guys for watching. Let's take a quick look at the stats. Okay, I've done some more reps on this uh, particular build, but I guess not on my PC. So um, it's 100% win rate right now, 3-0. and um, It has been doing pretty well outside of that, just like on my, uh, on my phone, which hasn't saved here to the stats. But uh, yeah, really happy with the deck. Check it out. Um, let me know if you guys have some success with it and try to get some standard events up, potentially some collab drafts with Ace. So thanks guys again for watching. I really appreciate you and we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.